Hello, hello, welcome to the video. So a while back, I was talking with someone on Discord by the name of Nature Enjoyer, and he asked me the question of which is more popular, Lion vs Tiger or Tyrannosaurus vs Spinosaurus. As you may have guessed from this video, I chose Lion vs Tiger as my answer, and it's easy to see why for the reasons I'll be going over in this video. Reason 1, more even of a matchup than other fight comparisons. First one I want to go over is that this fight is much more of an even matchup than it's even made out to be, or when compared to say, Spinosaurus vs Tyrannosaurus or Grizzly Bear vs Gorilla. These are the two largest cats alive today, with only a select few extinct species of felids, like the American Lion, Cave Lion, and Smilodon, and probably quite a few others I'm not aware of surpassing them in weight and size. While tigers and lions are often recorded surpassing weights of 180, 190 and 200 plus kilograms both in the wild and in captivity, male jaguars average about 102 kilograms in the Pantanal of northern Brazil. The largest weight for jaguars I've seen listed so far from my own personal research via skimming through books on these cats is 158 kilograms in Gugersberg's Wild Cats of the World. What is probably the largest jaguar ever recorded is easily equaled in size by tigers and lions on the smaller side of those two cat species. Admittedly, jaguars are very strong animals, being built to tackle large prey, but that's pretty much the cat body plan as a whole, which the jaguar is only a slight alteration of. Quite a few cat species, including jaguar, lion and tiger, can take on much larger prey than what they weigh, so the jaguar being built to tackle larger prey than itself is nothing special for cats. From what I could find, the largest tiger weighed about 258.5 kilograms, though some sources, such as Luke Hunter, state the largest tiger verified weighed 261 kilograms. Meanwhile, Hunter's Cats of Africa states lions can reach 260 kilograms, but according to a conversation I had with Lion Country, the largest wild lion he's come across was a massive 279 kilograms. Meanwhile, as I've said earlier, the largest recorded jaguar reportedly weighed 158 kilograms. This means that 261 kilo tiger was over 100 kilograms heavier. No other cat species can compete with tigers and lions when it comes to size, and the only ones that can are all extinct, meaning any stats listed for them are highly speculative and can easily change based on methods used to estimate them. Reason 2 Many fights have been recorded Rome, circuses, roadside zoos, etc. Anyone who knows anything about these animals can guess where this is going. You can easily find clips online, which I probably won't be able to show because copyright exists, of both tigers and lions fighting each other in zoos, circuses, and the odd video about the topic of these two in the Roman arenas. I think this one shouldn't really need to be explained in any sort of depth at all. Obviously, when these two have been recorded fighting each other in circuses and zoos, or in Roman times, of course someone is going to ask, who's the more deadly animal, the lion or the tiger? Admittedly, from what I've seen and read, it appears tigers and lions didn't fight at all, or not very often in the Roman arenas, but you get the point. So since this is something that can happen and does happen, it also stirs more interest due to the fact that we can actually look at these fights. By comparison, Giganosaurus vs Tyrannosaurus is a very, very hypothetical matchup based on fragmentary remains of animals that went extinct long before humans evolved. And even back in prehistoric times, these two animals wouldn't have met. Giganosaurus lived in South America around 97 to 101 million years ago, while Tyrannosaurus lived in North America around 66 to 69 million years ago, according to Encyclopedia of Dinosaurs. At their closest, there's still a 28 million year gap between them, and even if they were alive at the same time, neither would have seen each other or known of each other's existence due to both of them living on different continents. This also applies for Spinosaurus vs Tyrannosaurus as well. The recorded fights also mean that if you're, say, a lion fan and you want to say lions win because this or that, a tiger fan could simply just respond by going, oh, here's this fight from 1943 where a tiger killed a lion in the Hobart Zoo. Then, in response, you can just go, yeah, but this lion in the 1920s killed three tigers in the Moscow Zoo. And on and on the back and forth goes. One common point I even see made on both sides of the debate in YouTube videos even goes something along the lines of, uh, you know, if you actually read history, you'll see tigers actually win more than the lions do, or the other way around. 
Reason 3. The culture surrounding both animals. According to Wildcats of the World by Mel and Fiona Sunquist, in South America the jaguar has been a cultural icon for thousands of years, with some jaguar statues discovered being more than 5,000 years old. Shamans in South America are also known to wear jaguar skins during ceremonies and call upon the jaguar for permission to hunt. Witch doctors are known to consume drugs in order to transform themselves into a jaguar, and during this time as a jaguar, they pretty much shed everything about being human, including societal taboos, and have the jaguar powers such as strength and speed. Must be one hell of an LSD trip. It's also believed a long time ago in Olmec mythology a woman was sexually assaulted by a jaguar and this would later give rise to jaguar-human hybrids termed were-jaguars in the modern day. Natives also associate the jaguar heavily with thunder and rain as well as hunting. Getting back to our main subjects, the tigers flip-flopped a lot depending on what period of history you look at. Throughout history, it went from being a symbol of power and majesty and were often used as gifts by Asian royalty that only the royalty of Europe could see, to then later becoming a symbol of treachery, cowardice, and evil. For some time in India, they were considered pests to be destroyed by firearms, and then later on, when people thought of tigers as worth saving, they became symbols of the wild and untamed nature of the world. Meanwhile, the lion has often been used as a symbol of royalty and majesty, and like the tiger, it was also feared by people who lived with it. There was also a fear of Mjobo, or lion men, in the Singaida region of Tanzania, which was explored by witch doctors there, who threatened people that if they didn't pay them, they'd turn into lions. Reportedly, 103 deaths in 1946 were attributed to young men dressed with lion paws as gloves that made their victims look like they were killed by lions. For this video on why Lion vs Tiger is such a popular debate, I also checked out a book I've had for a while called On the Prowl in Search of Big Cat Origins by Mark Hallett and John Harris, but have yet to properly sit down and read. In the book, there's a chapter titled Man the Destroyer, which goes over the Romans' relationships with big cats, and also goes over some man-made extinctions of subspecies or regional variants of big cats, depending on whose taxonomy you follow. One part I recall them writing about was when gladiators fought the big cats in the arena, where it said that these animals were used not just as symbols of majesty, but also used to symbolise man's dominance over nature. The lion, the leopard, the tiger, the brown bear, and the wolf are all apex predators of modern ecosystems and are often seen as some of the greatest modern predators. The Romans slaughtering them not only gave the common folk a show, but also showed how man sat on top of his metaphorical throne over nature, where not even the strongest beasts nature could create could stop them. Most of the cats brought in were leopards and lions, with Barbary lions being a particular favourite when it came to crowd pleasers, but once they expanded outward into the Near and Middle East, tigers could easily be accessed. Sometimes these animals would also be used as tools for executing people. Alongside that, I remember Wild World in the video he did recently talking about all these uh, different works of art you see throughout history of a lion in a dominant position in a fight with a tiger. As he pointed out, the original artwork is most likely British propaganda. What we're seeing here with the lion portrayed as rescuing this woman from a tiger is Britain coming in to rescue the innocent from the villainous Southeast Asia. By villainous, I mean it from the British perspective of things, by the way. A country, obviously, isn't going to make propaganda that paints itself as being terrible, hence why you're not going to get any ally propaganda from World War II portraying themselves as war criminals. Remember kids, it's only a war crime if you lose. We actually have a couple of survivors, holy I think they got- they managed to get out of the landing craft in time. Well, I will see you at Nuremberg. Concerning both lions and tigers have been used as symbols of military might, with the lion being used by European countries and Asian ones favouring tigers, it's no surprise there would have been political propaganda shown depicting the two fighting as a way of symbolising the West versus the East. Animals are often used to symbolise all sorts of stuff. I mean, I even found a propaganda poster from World War II where they had a kangaroo and a British bulldog teaming up on a Japanese soldier with the line, together for victory, depicting Australia and Britain working together to fight Japan during World War II. The reason I bring all this stuff up is to show what sort of cultural significance these animals have. Even ones I'm not meant to be focusing on, like the jaguar, have for not just modern humans, but also for ancient civilizations. 
I mean, think of how significant the domestic cat is alone. I remember both me and my younger sister were really excited and really happy to get a couple cats ourselves. Admittedly, one was basically a demon, even by cat standards, but we were still excited. Cats in general are world famous, to the point I don't think there's many other animal families except for dogs that are as iconic and important to humans as cats. When you have animals that are so famous fighting each other, and on top of that they come from an already culturally significant group of animals, of course it's going to get a lot of attention whether it be an actual fight or a hypothetical matchup. Another part I want to bring up in this section is one of the points I made to Nature Enjoyer when I said to him I think Lion vs Tiger is more popular than Spinosaurus vs Tyrannosaurus. And that's that you have entire channels set up that brand themselves as Team Lion or Team Tiger. I remember Lion Country, one of these said channels, saying in a comment he left on my little announcement of this video that the reason this topic is annoying and pointless is because of the people in it and of how he had to make a 40 minute long video responding to a biased Tiger fan. A little bit later, I talked with someone on Discord who is more on the Tiger side of things and they said to me that Lion Country is the sort of person to make a 40 minute video responding to someone because of a different opinion. After that, that's when I asked them about it since I hadn't seen whatever the drama Lion Country is in at the time this conversation took place, since I don't watch his content very often. They responded saying that they hadn't seen the video, only the title and thumbnail, but that's what they've heard about him and that they were more familiar with the person Lion Country was in drama with, the King Theropod show. They also said that Lion Country is the sort of person to say how a healthy male lion killing a sick tigress means the lion wins 100% of the time. In response to this, rather than taking this person's word at face value, I asked them how much of Lion Country's content they had seen? The answer was predictable. Not one video of Lion Country's had they actually seen. I personally don't really care about the drama, so I'm not going to comment on it too much or at all throughout this video, but one thing I think this conversation I had has demonstrated is that some people live in echo chambers, causing myths about either species to propagate, which by extension further fuels the debate. Reason 4. Both are heavily studied. This is one I think is easily summarised by my reply to Lion Country's comment on a community post of mine where he said that you don't want to go into this debate without having an unmatched mentality, as he put it. My reply was about how Lion vs Tiger reminds me of a video I saw from the YouTube channel Laserpig, who makes history videos. In one of his videos, which I can't remember the title of, he pointed out of how vast of a war World War II was. This war might have only gone for roughly six years, but so many people fought in it and so many people were involved in it as a whole. This war had so many people across the world in it, across such a good chunk of time, that you can dig up any quote from anyone ranging from some housewife talking about her husband's participation in the war to a high-ranking general and spin any sort of rubbish from it, hence why you see people saying of how Germany had UFOs or time machines. The same can be applied to a large amount of debates on popular animals, especially lions and tigers. For their book, Wild Cats of the World, Sunquist and Sunquist referenced 118 sources for the lions chapter and 135 for the tigers chapter, and you'll probably find this, even for 2002, would have been a mere fraction of the amount of scientific papers and books written on these animals. This pool of knowledge in the case of lion vs tiger, the way I see it at least, is a blessing and a curse. It's a blessing in the form that we know lots more about these animals compared to previous generations, and it's a curse because anyone looking to paint either animal as the victor can easily skew it in either direction by looking for the right paper, news article, or quote from a book or expert. As an example of skewing stuff in favour of tigers, older reports, according to the Wild Cat book, lists tigers in the range of 315 to 385 kilograms, averaging out to 350 kilograms. Meanwhile, according to Wildcats of the World by the same authors, lions vary in size from 145 to 225 kilos, averaging out to about 185 kilos. Just from these two books alone, I've always made the fight look very one-sided in favour of the tiger, now haven't I? If I wanted the fight to be more even, I could do that. According to the Wildcat book, modern Siberian tigers are actually 180 to 225 kilograms, averaging out to 202.5. Meanwhile, Luke Hunter's Wildcats of the World lists lions as ranging from 150 to 272 kilograms in weight, which averages out to 211. 
Just from cherry picking the right sources, we've gone from a one side fight of 165 kilograms in favor of the tiger to just 8.5 kilograms in favor of the lion. 8.5 kilograms isn't that much when we're talking about 200 plus kilos of weight on either side. Now let's say I want to cherry pick it drastically in favor of the lion. Well, I can do that. Cats of Africa by Luke Hunter states lions can reach up to 260 kilograms, while his Wildcats of the World states tigers as ranging from 100 to 261 kilos, averaging out to 180 and a half. Now we've gone from 8.5 kilos in favor of the lion to 79 and a half kilos in favor of the lion. I know size isn't everything in a fight, and you have a point there. Now imagine if it's this easy to cherry pick the weight, what about bite force, forelimb strength, speed, agility, stamina, durability, fighting experience? You could easily pick whichever source you want to make either cat seem superior to the other. And it doesn't even have to be a credible source. Why read books by experts or scientific papers when Wikipedia exists? Or you could just use some old and outdated 1950s children's encyclopedia you've had in your basement since you were born. Or if you want, just blindly trust some large institution or company with a random post they put out and wave it around going, oh look, it's from this major institution, which is trustworthy because this other major institution said so, therefore the lion wins. Just ignore any methods used, ignore any possible variables, ignore that they don't cite a study anywhere, and just blindly go along with it because they said your favourite cat wins over this other person's favourite cat. It's stuff like this that's the reason why I'm a jaguar enjoyer, and not a lion or tiger fanboy. Reject the Pepsi vs Coke of the animal world. Embrace the buff leopard supremacy. Conclusion. To summarize lion vs tiger and the elements behind its popularity, you're talking about what can be best described as a perfect storm. Both are the largest living members of the same family of animals. Pretty evenly matched, both are icons of multiple countries and their respective cultures. Both have been often recorded fighting in captivity, both are very well studied, meaning you can easily pick whatever sources you want or fights you want or this or that expert you want to make one seem superior or inferior to the other. Then, as mentioned earlier, you have channels that brand themselves as being pro lion or pro tiger. And overall, this is why, until I decide to make this video at least, I've stayed out of the debate entirely. I was obsessed with the Tyrannosaurus vs other theropods trend for a while, but after a while I had a moment of enlightenment. The reality is, is that with those comparisons, is that those animals are known from fragmentary remains, and any stats listed, no matter how up to date with current research they might be, is speculative at the end of the day, and changes depending on methods used. And by the looks of it, the same way I've lost interest in who's the biggest and strongest theropod, I think some people have or are having similar enlightenment moments to what I had but with Lion vs Tiger. You remember the part earlier in the video where I mentioned some recent drama Lion Country was in? Yeah, well, I couldn't help but notice the near identical things said by both King Theropod and Lion Country in their respected videos. I don't like making videos like this here. I prefer to do other types of videos because quite frankly, I feel this is a waste of time and this is just, I could do better things and like spend my time doing other things. It's been a while guys, Lion Country here. As you all are probably aware that I am not uploading as much as I used to. And that is mainly due to the fact that I was actually taking a break from Lion vs Tiger. Because quite frankly, I have much better things to do in my life. I don't know about you, but when people who are much more involved in this stuff than I am say they got better stuff to do, I think that's a clear sign this is a pointless debate. I remember someone said to me on a community post that when it comes to Lion vs Tiger, even though you get a lot of rubbish being said, like lions are lazy pigs and tigers are cowards, you do get to learn a lot about nature. My response to that is that, yeah, you might learn a lot about both animals, but I think a better way to learn is via reading books. You see people say of how the internet exists and you can learn via the internet and the internet's free and all, but just because something's free doesn't mean it's better. This is why I recommend to all of you watching this video to pick up a book and start reading instead of mindlessly scrolling on social media. Like every other video where I reference sources, everything is listed down below, so I recommend checking all the sources I read and see if you can get copies of them for yourself or find them on the internet archive and read through them on there. Yeah, sure, it might be easy just to watch a 10 minute video on lions or tigers, but sometimes it is better to sit down and read through a book on them. Anyway, hopefully you liked and subscribed, I'ma head off now, since like Lion Country and King Theropod said themselves, I got better things to do. There was also a fear of Umjobo, or Lion Men, in the Sigin- There was also a fear of Umjobo, or Lion Men, in the Sing- 
Singida. There was also a fear of Mjobo or Lion Men in the Singida proper. <laughs> How do you pronounce that? The Singida region of. There was also a fear of Mjobo or Lion Men in the Singida. Lion Men in the Singida region of Tanzania. There was also a fear of Mjobo or Lion Men in the Singida. Singida? In the Singida region of Tanzania. Singida. 